Hello, hello, welcome children. We are on probably our second to last chapter of the year already, surface area and volume. So just a quick little intro. Um, last chapter you found the areas of just like two-dimensional shapes. So like square, rectangle, triangle, parallelogram, blah, 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 right? Today or in this chapter, it's now gonna be three-dimensional. So something you can actually hold in your hand, okay? So surface area is the name of the game today, and it's kind of exactly what it sounds like. You're going to find the area of all the different surfaces of your figure and add them together. So a formal definition for a surface area is the sum of the areas of all the faces of a figure. Now the faces are just like the sides. So you're going to find each individual side and add them all together, and that will give you the surface area. Now, we can break up surface area into two like different pieces. Um, the first one is your lateral area, and that's the sum of the areas of the non-base faces of your figure. So, if we look here, your bases of your figure are the two parallel faces, so the ones that do not touch. So in this case here, do you guys see how these two hexagons don't touch each other? They're parallel to each other. Those would be your bases, okay? And then these rectangular walls, all these rectangles that build up this prism here would be considered, excuse me, considered your lateral area. So the bases are parallel. And then your lateral faces are like the walls that typically build it up. Um, just in case you didn't know how you name like a figure like this, you look at its base shape. So like I said before, this is a hexagon. So it's a hexagonal and then it's a prism because it's both flat on the top and bottom. So this would be a hexagonal, hexagonal prism. If it had five, five sides on the bottom, you'd call it a pentagonal prism. Or if it had um, eight sides, an octagonal, or so on. Do you guys kind of see what I'm saying? Or a rectangular prism, right? Um, and then the difference between these two prisms on your sheet of paper is a right prism is straight up and down. So um, your height could be any of your lateral walls that go up because it's a right angle. It's perpendicular to your base. Whereas an oblique prism is it's pushed over, it's just shoved over to the side, so it's slanted. So like this right here, that line, which is a different color, would not be your height of your prism because it's not perpendicular to that base. So again, you're always looking for that right angle. Ooh, there's a lot of talking there. Okay, here we go. Let's actually try something like this. Find the surface area. So we have to find all these different individual parts. I'm going to start with this bottom. I like to start with my base area. That's just me. And really, any two sides could be your base area on, um, or your bases on a rectangular prism because you have three different pairs of sides that are parallel. But I'm just going to stick to the top and bottom. Okay, so my base area, BA, um, 9 by 4. That's how you find the area of a rectangle, which gives me 36. And then can we agree that the top and bottom are congruent? They're the exact same. So I can multiply this guy by 2, and we get 72. So that's my base area. Now I'm going to shift to my lateral area. I'm going to find this front wall first. So when I trace this out, it's 9 by, and this would be 6. It would match that 6 over there. So 9 times 6 gives us 54. And then that front and back wall, this back wall back here, would also be the same dimensions. So you take that 54 times 2 and get 108. And then we have the left and right walls. So the dimensions of this would be 4 and 6. 24, 24 times 2, right? Because then this left wall over here would also be the same. Get 48. And then in the end, folks, we add up 
those areas of so 72, 108, 48, for a grand total of 228 feet, and then it's still area squared. Woo! There we go. That is the surface area. So if you had to construct this box, it would take you this much material to do it or to wrap it, or those are probably the only things you'd really do with that. Okay, so in a nutshell, that's a rectangular prism finding surface area. If you want to write this down, awesome. If not, let's move on. That is a rectangular prism. Okay, now this one here, we have a triangular prism. And why is it a triangular prism? So if I go on the bottom, my bottom here is a rectangle. Well, it's flipped on its side because do I have a side that's parallel to this rectangle? No, I don't. Because this triangle right here would be parallel to this one in the back. So my base shape is actually a triangle, a triangular prism. Okay, I'm gonna write that down, triangular prism. So I'm gonna start with my base area. Our base for a triangle is half base times height. So if I go here, my base is 12, my height is 12, that's nice. So 12 times 12 divided by two, base times height divided by two. 12 times 12 is 144 divided by two is 72. But I think um, this back triangle here is the exact same. So I have to take that 72 times two and get 144. So our base area is 144. And now we have to find our lateral area. Start the easy one, this bottom here. When I trace out that rectangle, I get 12 by eight. 12 times eight gives me 96. Trace out this wall on the left here. Again, I get another 12 and eight. And then we have that slanted guy in the back. So we know this right here, it's width is eight, but how tall is it? Well, we have to figure it out. So you can do a few different things. Um, few different things that we can do here. So you notice that this is a right angle, so you could do Pythagorean theorem to get this guy, or since we do know that both of my legs of this triangle are the same, that means this would be a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So if my leg is 12, my hypotenuse would be 12 root two, which is about 17, if you give it as decimal. So now we know the dimensions of that rectangle are 17 and eight, and we get 136. So now for our total surface area, we can add up all of those numbers. So 144 plus 96 plus 96 plus 136 for a grand total of 472 millimeters squared. Another way to look at this one too, just so you know you're doing it right, when you're finding your lateral area, you're always going to take your three sides of your triangle times the height. So do you guys see how one side of your triangle is 12, my other one was 12, and the other side of the triangle was 17? So to find that lateral area, you're taking each of those sides times the height. I don't know if that helped you or confused you, but if it helped you, awesome. If it confused you, forget I said it. Okay, now let's move on to cylinders, which I think you guys will thoroughly enjoy because there's a nice formula to go with it. So again, we have a right cylinder and an oblique cylinder. A cylinder, you guys think of like a Pringles can or just a can in general, like a soup can. Um, we have two bases, right? We have two bases here. And our base shape is a circle, which is awesome. We love finding the area of a circle. And then if we wanted to find our lateral area, if we look here at this net, if we unravel our cylinder, this is what a net is, like we unraveled our shape. This is what it would look like, okay? 
So again, we have our two circles. So we know we're going to have to have the area of a circle somewhere in our formula. So I do what pi r squared and another pi r squared. And then when you unravel that cylinder, right, we get this rectangle. How do you find the area of a rectangle? You take its base times its height. Well, we already have our height, but how can we figure out what this length would be? I think I unravel it around this circle. So how do you find the distance around a circle? That's called circumference, right, right. So you're taking your circumference of your circle, right? I just unraveled it and I got my circumference of my circle here, times its height will give me this entire area. So your formula, two pi r squared for your base area. So I have two circles. So I'm taking the area of the circle times two. And then your lateral area, is the circumference 2 pi r times the height. It's kind of neat how that works out. So your total formula, 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. Make sure you have that written down correctly. OK. Let's try a pretty straightforward example. Find the surface area. So kids, it's just calculator work. Um, 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. We're just plugging in. So if we look here, what's our radius? Our radius, so when they give you this whole line like this, that typically means it's the diameter they're giving you. So I want half of that, right? So half of 15 would be 7.5. So 2 pi 7.5 squared plus 2 pi, 7.5, and now the height, so our cylinder's laying on its side, that's okay, but its height would be 18 times 18. So if you're really good at typing into your calculator, go to town, type this whole thing in. If you kind of want to break it down a little bit more step by step, what I would do is I figure out what 2 times 7.5 squared is. That's 112.5 pi plus, and then if you take 2 times 7.5 times 18, that should be about 270 pi. Add your pi's together, and you should get what? 382.5 pi, which is approximately, oh boy, here you go, folks, 1,201.65 millimeters squared. So again, you do whatever you're comfortable with. If you just type in your calculator and you end up with this answer, awesome. If you typed it in your calculator all in one step and you did not get that answer, I suggest you break it down into smaller pieces so you make less mistakes. And we are going to skip that last example. Maybe we'll do it in class together. Okay, awesome. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in class. Tutto Lou.